In tennis, the word love means a score of zero. Why? It could be because in French, l'œuf means the egg, and in two dimensions, an egg looks like a zero. Ridiculous? Maybe. But in the sport of cricket, a batsman who scores zero runs is said to have scored a duck, which is meant to be short for a duck's egg, the shape of which looks like a zero. One is significant in fraud detection. Once upon a time, astronomers like Simon Newcomb relied on logarithmic tables to make calculations easier. In the library, Newcomb noticed how much more shabby the early pages in the log tables were, corresponding to numbers beginning with 1. These were the most popular numbers. He discovered that in real-life data, more numbers begin with 1 than any other digit. The next most popular digit at the beginning of a number is 2, then 3, etc., all the way to 9. Here's Newcomb's paper in which he describes the distribution of first digits. In 1938, Frank Benford, who was two years old when Newcomb published his findings, found the phenomenon Newcomb had discovered applied in a large variety of situations. About a third of numbers in many real-life situations, including scientific data and financial accounts, should begin with one. Otherwise, fraud may be suspected. Only one prime number is even, and no doubt you've guessed by now that it's the first prime number, two. Take any number, multiply it by three. Now, add up the digits of the new number. Whatever number you begin with, the result will always be divisible by three. Try it. You only need four colours for any conceivable map. So said Francis Guthrie in 1853. The proof came in 1976, the first ever theorem proved by a computer. The standard for platonic solids is high, so high that out of an infinity of solid shapes, only five qualify, discovered by those tireless geometers, the ancient Greeks. To qualify, a solid's faces must all be identical. The faces must meet at the same number of identical edges. They must meet at identical angles. They are completely regular, and so the platonic solids can be used as fair dice. Other solids, like this hexagonal bipyramid, can be used as dice because the faces are all equally likely to come up. It's not platonic, its faces are isosceles, not equilateral triangles. Six is the smallest perfect number, meaning it can be made by summing its divisors. Twenty-eight is the next perfect number. Euclid recorded these results 2,300 years ago. Then comes 496. Did you get that one, Euclid? You wouldn't have got the next one, though. 8,128. How about the fifth perfect number? 33,550,336. The fifth perfect number only surfaced 1,700 years after Euclid's time in Germany in 1456. Here are the first 10 perfect numbers. 51 perfect numbers have been found to date. If you're feeling inspired, perhaps you can do what no one has yet done and prove whether or not all perfect numbers are even and if they ever stop. According to Christian tradition, there are seven deadly sins. See how many you think you can spot in this work by James Gilray from 1787. Here's something to do with the number eight, which I find particularly appealing. For 76 years, our solar system was said to have nine planets. This followed Clyde Tombaugh's discovery of Pluto on February the 18th, 1930. Pluto became planet nine. It lost its status on August the 24th, 2006. This was the day that the International Astronomical Union redefined the word planet. 
The new definition excluded Pluto, which is now classed as a dwarf planet. Pythagoras and his followers believed the universe was constructed with numbers. Of all the numbers, ten was truly divine. The Pythagoreans' holy symbol was the Tetractus, a figure said to have been created by Pythagoras himself. The rows of the vertices consisted of the first four numbers, their sum generated the divine number. Pythagoreans prayed to the Tetractus and swore oaths of faith to it. To the Pythagoreans, the Tetractus and the number 10 symbolized the harmony of the cosmos, a greater unity than one.